Welcome in, everybody, to Studio Day Heffrey Day Quarantine. I wanted you to see me in my natural habitat. This is what my head looks like when I wake up. It's nice to see you. Make sure you're locked in today, 2 to 7, 105.3 The Fan, home of the Cowboys, radio.com app if you're out of the listening area. The Cowboys have signed J. Ron Curse, who, um, if you listen to the show, you'll know is my least favorite safety prospect in the history of the NFL draft. When I was watching him at Clemson, I didn't think that he tried hard or had great awareness. But he's now four years into an NFL career, so clearly I missed. And um, he's also a special teamer, which means that he does try hard. But I will say this, with the J-Ron Curse edition, I believe what you just signed is depth and a special teamer. So, what is next on the Cowboys agenda? And by the way, if you're here for draft talk, I'll, I'll mention a little bit. Got a little something at the end. J.C. Horn, Patrick Sertan having their pro days. Cowboys aren't done at safety. They're going to continue to um, pursue a starting free safety. They still don't have one. I don't think J. Ron Curse is that guy. I don't think Keanu Neal is that guy. So, uh, Keanu Neal will play some form of box safety linebacker around the line of scrimmage. J. Ron Curse, I believe, is going to be viewed as the same sort of player and a guy who's going to be on a bunch of special teams. So, that's what the Cowboys have signed so far. Who do I believe is the most likely guy that you're going to hear next to the Cowboys? I believe it's DeMonte KZ. Um, the visits of Malik Hooker and DeMonte KZ to the Cowboys were about medical. They're both coming off of a torn Achilles, so it was about checking how are these guys doing. Now, don't quote me on this. This is just scuttlebutt, but I'm going to say Perhaps KZ is a little further along in recovery, and that will make him the target for the Cowboys and potentially your starting free safety this year. So keep an eye on DeMonte KZ. I wouldn't mind if it were Malik Hooker. I'm just trying to give you the guy that I think is more likely to be the guy, and that is the way that I think this thing is going to go. Now, we move on briefly to um, the pro days that we have had recently where Dan Quinn... And Will McClay were in attendance. So the guy who makes the board, the head of the scouts, and the defensive coordinator, they both went and saw Patrick Sertan at Alabama and then J.C. Horn the next day at South Carolina. And they both had outstanding pro days. Do I have the numbers in front of me? No, but Patrick Sertan is 6'2", 208. Uh, his vertical jump, I'm not going to need him. I can see the numbers. His vertical jump was 39 inches. His broad jump was 131 inches. J.C. Horn was 6006, so that's just under 6'1". That's six foot and three quarters. 205 pounds. Uh, his vertical was 41 and a half. His broad jump was 41 or 41 and a half. So jumped a little further, a little higher. Uh, and ran a little faster. I believe, depending on whose numbers you're going with, you'll see numbers for Sertan at 4.42 and 4.44, and for Horn at 4.37 and 4.39. These are the top two cornerback prospects in this draft class. With Caleb Farley having another back vasectomy, I don't know the word for what they do back there, so I just say back vasectomy. Don't worry about it. Uh, with that, I'm not... I'm not touching him in the top 10. We're not doing that, okay? So we're going to let the Caleb Farley thing go. And if it's a corner to the Cowboys, we're going to focus on J.C. Horn and Patrick Sertan. A lot of people's preference and perhaps the Cowboys' preference. This one I don't know. I could totally see it being Patrick Sertan, though. Guy that's just been groomed to be a pro, three-year starter at Alabama, playing against great competition. I could see it being him. For me, it's actually J.C. Horn, who – you know, South Carolina, but also three-year starter. Their ball productions are fairly similar. Horn can throw in sacks because he follows star receivers, so he'll line up in the slot sometimes and occasionally be a blitzer. Uh, and I just love the way he plays. I think he's going to irritate people. He's going to bother people. Receivers are going to hate playing against him. Um, both would be a fine pick at number 10, but let's eliminate Caleb Farley and let's focus in on Sertan and Horn. And the wild card of if the Cowboys are going willing to go offensive player, if the best player available plays offense. Kyle Pitts, if he made it to 10. Panay Sewell or Rashawn Slater, if they make it to 10. I don't think they would entertain wide receiver, but if they would, sure, throw in Jamar Chase and Jalen Waddell and Devontae Smith because I think all of those guys could be one of the top 10 players in this draft class. So there you have it. J. Ron Kerr signed. I believe Demonte KZ will be the focus instead of Malik Hooker going forward, but we shall see. And J.C. Horn for me, 
Cornerback one. Don't be mad if they pick him at 10. J.C. Horn's a baller. Sertan's good, too. That'd be a fine pick. Remember, please hit the thumbs up button. Hit the like button. Lock it into 105.3 The Fan every day. And leave in the comments what you want to hear about tomorrow. I know I've been doing more streaming than video making, but I wanted to pop you one this morning because I woke up and my morning depression sucked. So I journaled, and then I decided to pop out a video, and life's getting better. Uh, Remember, you have no idea what anyone's going through on any given day, so be cool to everybody. I love you, and I'll catch you guys later.